Calc 2, lecture 23, parametric equations and the polar coordinates. So the first section is curves defined by parametric equations. Well, until now, when we talked about curve, even from, I don't know, maybe college algebra or whatever, everybody had, has some idea. So you have some feeling what curve means. If I ask you to draw a curve for me, you could do that. Maybe you just draw a circle, for example, or something else. Uh, but uh, we really did not define curve uh, rigorously. I think this uh, at this point we can we can define it. Now this is this is a curve. So uh, say a curve in x y plane. In, in fact, a, a curve in any space has similar definition. So we say that a curve is a set of points x, y uh, such that both x and y are functions of a third variable with, which usually we denote by t for time and I will tell you why we use t. So that's this set, this uh, points x, y and each one of them is a function of say time. And these two, the x and the y, are independent of each other, but they depend on t. And I will show you some pictures uh, what I mean by independent of each other. And I have written this here. So, now, the best, say, way to talk about curve, in fact, is using physics. So let me erase this. So using physics, in fact mechanics, because I'm talking about, uh, say, a particle or a point, but well, there's no point, ge geometric point in physics. In fact, everything is a particle, which is not just geometric point, it's more than geometric point. So uh, let's assume that we have uh, an object somewhere in the XY plane, and this object start moving. So it's like you are standing on the ground and you start moving. So you start moving. And if you attach a marker, say, to this object that is moving, uh, you will see something is drawn in uh, uh, XY plane. Or if you are attaching it to yourself, you will see something on the ground. And that's something you call it a curve. Now, what are the things that come into this picture? It's, well, first of all, I said a, a geometric, uh, I mean a physical, say, point, okay? Then uh, we, can, we can model a physical, a physical point that's just a geometric point, which has no dimension. So, dimension zero, in fact. So, uh, now this, this thing is moving, motion. So the second thing that comes into mind is motion. Motion, what is it? Uh, and when motion comes into the picture, there's another thing which uh, comes with motion, and that is time. Even if you are standing somewhere, you're standing still, you're not moving, uh, it, uh, it, still time comes into the picture. So we say I was standing there for five minutes. So time is kind of attached to motion. Now, I'm not going into the philosophy of blah, 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 no. Just uh, simple physics. When we talk about motion, time, time comes into the picture. Now, if I'm moving in XY plane, what else? At any moment in time. So if I start at time zero, at any moment in time, at any moment in time, I am somewhere in x, y plane and this somewhere is a point in x, y plane and every point in x, y plane has two coordinates, the x and the y, okay? So if I started here, if I started here with, uh, say, at, in some initial x, y, x0, y0, then here I am at point x and y, right? So. I started at point x0, y0, at time t0, at time t, I am at point x and y. 
Now, well, you can just. Uh, gee, I don't know what to say. That. So you can you can just see that the x and y coordinate of uh, this motion are related to t. So what does that mean? It means that they're functions of t, right? Uh, functions of t uh, means that you can uh, draw a table like this, remember from uh, early days of uh, college algebra or maybe free algebra, I don't know where. So, for, so it means that the t is like a, a free variable. Uh, although you might say, okay, how, how come it's free? It's just moving. Yeah, true, but well, we can say it's a free variable. And the x and the y are not really free. So at time zero, it is at x zero, y zero. Then at time, say, 0.1 second, I don't know, hour, depending on the situation, it might be at a point, say, if it started at x zero is one, for example, and this is, say, two, it might be at, say, 1.3 and, uh, um, say, 2.5, something like that. And then at point two, it is at point, let's say, 1.4, and uh, it's like 3.1 and so on. So uh, that's, that's the meaning. That's the meaning that the x and the y depend on t. So if at any time t we measure uh, some, some one way the coordinates of uh, the point, uh, we get some numbers. And that's the meaning of depending. So depending on the time, those the x and y uh, are the some numbers. So we say that x and y are uh, functions of t, and uh, which in this case time. Okay, now I said that the x and the y are kind of independent. So let me uh, tell you what I mean by this thing. Uh, so if I'm at this point at some time, right, I can uh, move. Uh, Say, uh, I don't know, say, so let's say that uh, I can move, say, this way, and I'm at some x and y, and this x and the y, the x is the same, but the y is this. But I can move this way, still x is the same, but y is different. So it's the same x, y1, x y2. You see, the same x gave me two y's. In fact, that, that's, that, that's, I said gave me, that's wrong. I cannot say x is giving me y. No. If x were to give me y, then y is a function of x and function means what? What? Functions, function means that it is well defined. It means that for a given x, I should just get one answer, not two, three, or blah, blah answers. And you can see that it just can go anywhere with the same x and different y's. So, y does not depend on x. y is not a function of x. And also, x is not a function of y. And what we will see that we can find, we can find, uh, locally, locally we can say that, locally, which means that uh, if I'm moving, say, uh, here, if I'm moving the, to the right or left, I mean, if I'm moving, then in some small neighborhood, I can say that it is, in fact, function. Uh, but uh, globally, we can't say too much. In fact, that uh, uh, implicit function theorem, that, that's one of the most important theorems in all mathematics. But let, let's not go... Uh, deeper into this, but let's just say that globally the y is not a function of x. And both of them are functions of time, of t. Okay, now as you see this, this model in fact uh, is used in physics, because I started with uh, uh, physics in fact. Uh, and I can say that with aid of physics, and ideas from physics we were able to define a curve. Okay, so let's uh, let me give you examples of this thing. 
now usually we start with the simplest example. And that's a circle, you okay a circle. So uh, well let's uh, let's draw a circle centered at uh, zero zero. Say and uh, this is circle with center zero and the radius r. Okay, so what are coordinates? I mean, I should write the coordinates of this curve, x and y coordinates at any say time, say as a function of uh, I mean, as a function of that time. So it's like a, a particle starts moving somewhere, say here, and goes. Oh, it moves on the circle. And uh, what is changing? Well, the thing that is changing is, in fact, this angle, right? This angle is changing. So we can say that the, that angle is a function of time. So that angle is changing as a function of time. Those who have taken physics one, you know that this is like the uh, starting point of a rotational motion, right? You, when you di the discuss rotational motion, you write theta as a function of time. Then the derivative of that with respect to time will be omega. Right, and the second derivative will be, uh, yeah, say, something else that you call uh, alpha, for example, if that's the one you, you use for that. So the omega is like a rotational, uh, say, speed or velocity or whatever, and the other one is a rotational acceleration. <sighs> but anyway, so this angle itself, uh, this angle is a function of time, so we can just say it's just the simplest function of time. So we can just say it is t. I'm not saying it is t, no, it can be anything. So let's take this to be just t, which means that the time, say, one second, for example, this is one, say, radian. I don't know, the radian, one radian is too big. We can say that it is one degree, say, or something. And then at time two, it is two degrees, and so on. So at 360, say, seconds, it, uh, it is, it, it's gone one round. Something like that. So, uh, and then we can say that, that the t, in fact, is the measure of that angle. Time, so at any time, uh, we say that the angle has measure t. Now, if this angle is t, then we know from the trigonometry that the x and y coordinates of this point, x and y coordinates of this point, uh, satisfy certain uh, equations. So if this is r, the x coordinate is r cosine t and the y coordinate is r sine t. And then assuming that it is moving this way. Uh, now, if I uh, well, let me draw a larger picture and show you why this happens, because you might not remember that. So uh, if I have uh, so this point is this is t, usually you use theta for this, but that's okay. And this is the right triangle. This is R, remember? Uh, so what is this This side? This side is the X coordinate and this side is the Y coordinate. Uh, remember, X over R is cosine T and the Y over R by definition is sine T. And hence we get X is R cosine T and the Y is R sine T. And the R doesn't change, so what the T, or, uh, which is kind of the measure of this angle, changes. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I wrote about it. So that's how uh, you write X. And remember, R is fixed. R is fixed. But it doesn't have to be fixed. R can change with time. You will see in the polar coordinates, in fact. Uh, so let's assume that R is fixed in this case, and that gives me the circle, which means that if the particle is moving according to this law, then it's moving on this, on this circle. So if the position of a particle is defined by these two functions, then that particle is moving 
on a circle with radius r centered at the origin. Now, this only defines the path, only defines the path of uh, this particle. Now, well, well, let me give you an example. So, if you are driving on a highway, for uh, say, and there's another car by your side, and assume that it's like a two uh, two lane highway, and you are going, so both of you are going the same path, but the, the other person might go say 50 miles per hour, and you are going like 60 miles per hour. So you have different speeds, but uh, you are going on the same path. You are moving on the same path. Uh, so the same path, but different motion. And by different motion, I mean like uh, you can just uh, go up to some point and slow down and then accelerate, slow down, accelerate, and so on. But the other one might, might be just going straight with the same speed all the time, no acceleration or deceleration, say. Uh, so, but the path is the same. <sighs> okay. Now you can guess, those of you who have uh, some more uh, physical, say, intuition, you can guess that, in fact, that uh, motion is related to this, uh, uh, this angle. The fact that I have written the angle as just a simple function of time, just t, uh, that is, uh, it, it gives me this formula. But if I had written this angle as 2t, right, then uh, theta would be 2t, and the d theta dt, which is omega uh, angular speed, is uh, 2, for example. So, uh, I, I would write this there, and let me explain what I'm saying. So, if this, uh, this let's say, t is not just t. So, if I say, no, I don't like this thing. This is not the motion I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of something else. So, if you say no. Uh, these are two cars, in fact, on the same path, and the second car is moving with a different motion. This is, say, uh, 3t. So this motion, in this case, I have theta equals t, omega, which is d theta dt, is uh, 1, and alpha, which is uh, the second derivative of theta, is 0, in fact, which means that I, don't, I do not have any angular acceleration. Uh, but in this situation, theta is uh, 3t, so omega, which is the is now 3, and again alpha is also 0 in this case. Okay, so <laughs> these two, they, they, they are both, these two say objects, object number 1 and object number 1 and 2, they are moving on the same path, but they have different motion. Uh, I mean, if I write out for this one, the third, this for this one, the, the equation becomes the two equations. They become x is uh, say r cosine three t, and y is r sine three t. You might remember from. Uh, that the function like this, uh, this say number here, we call the t, or the coefficient of that t was called uh, omega in fact, frequency. So the, we use uh, omega for this thing, and I have, but that's in fact what we have here, right? That's the derivative of theta with respect to t. So, anyway, so this. Object and the other object, they are two different objects, uh, but they are going on the same path. But which one is faster? If they start here at the same time, if they start here at the same time, let me uh, draw a picture here. If they start at the same time, we might have something like this. I, I don't know how to. Uh, uh, I just have one other color here. Just. Blue, so can let us show so well. So let's say we have car number one or object number one, and the other one, object number two, and object number two, and this is object two, and this is object number one. So uh, the angular 
speed of this one is three times the other one, right? So in one second, in one second, in one second, this is this blue one is say at one. Theta equals one something. The other one is at theta equals three. It's here. So one will be here. One. One will be here in one second. Say, will be here somewhere. But the other one, so this is one. The other one will be somewhere here. So that's number two, which is three times this. So if this is t, if this is say one. Uh, this one is three. Right. So uh, if you, uh, I, I don't think you can do that on your calculator, but if you do it on, say, uh, mathematical, which I might do that for you uh, as another sub lecture and show you how they move. Uh, this one might go like this, the other one. So in no time, the other one might be here. But this one is just going so slowly. And you can guess that if it takes this one, say, five hours, or no, no, let's say, uh, say six hours, this number one, to get here, it takes the other one two hours to get there. Right? So because that is three times this. So you divide that number of hours. So. Uh, and we are assuming that there is no angular acceleration now at all. This angular acceleration comes into the picture if this t is not uh, 3t, for example, if this 3t squared, for example, if this is a quadratic function of time, or some other function of time, then we, we will get alpha here. <laughs> but anyway, so, now what we are concerned is uh, basically the path in this case, although we will see, at least in this uh, section, we will see that and uh, then also the other one also comes into the picture, and that is the, uh, when we try to find, say, tangent line to this scale, for example. Uh, but anyway, now, how do you uh, graph a parametric equation? So these are called parametric equations. So parametric equations are uh, equations like this, that x and y are functions of time. So parametric equations are at least in 2D are like this. So we have x, this is a function of time, some function of time, and y is also a function of time. The f and g doesn't have to be different, they can be the same. That's okay. Uh, so f and g functions of time. So uh, usually, usually the notation that we use is not this. Uh, to not get confused and not use too many, you know, uh, say uh, things here, uh, alphabet. Uh, say we usually write it as just this. Although you might say this doesn't make sense, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's make sense of it. Uh, instead of using uh, f and g, we just use x and y themselves. And when I say x equals xt, I mean that x is a function of time. And y equals yt, I mean y is a function of time. And uh, so, parametric equations in 2D are like, uh, something like this. Now you can, uh, you can guess that in 3D, then you have a z. z will be z of t. In dimension n, it is x1, x2, x3, blah, 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 blah. Each one of them is a function of time. And uh, on, let's say, there's also another thing which uh, goes much deeper into mathematics, maybe even at graduate level, and that's something we call dimension. Somehow the dimension is related to this parameter. This t is called parameter. If you just uh, uh, look at the, the simple dimension of, uh, uh, say, other types, uh, the simple dimension is uh, 
related to this parameter, and, uh, in fact, number of parameters. And you will see in Calc 3 that if you have two parameters, you are dealing with a two-dimensional object. Here we have one parameter, so we are dealing with a one-dimensional object, and that is a curve. And it can be in any uh, ambient dimension. It can be in dimension 100, but if it has the way it is defined using one parameter, you might just call it a curve in dimension there and so on. <sighs> okay, so uh, that's how you uh, define parametric equations and uh, in fact a curve. So a parametric equation in the dimension 2 uh, gives you a curve. So you can either say curve or a parametric equation. But, well, when we say curve, we are in fact referring to some geometric object. So, uh, we can just talk about this thing in an abstract way and just close our eyes and say we don't see anything. So, and uh, we don't have any model for, say, x, y plane. It's just something, something mathematical abstraction. Uh, anyway, so, uh, now, I will, uh, yeah, I mean, you can use the calculator or Wolfram Alpha to uh, graph uh, some parametric curves and uh, just just play games with that. Just uh, de uh, define uh, different equations and the graph it, and you will see amazing and beautiful uh, curves. Uh, now, let's just look at some uh, important examples. So one is circles. Uh, okay, circles is a uh, what is a circle? A circle is a, a circle with radius r center hk. Okay, radius r center hk. Remember from uh, college algebra that's x minus. Uh, h squared plus y minus k squared equal r squared. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, now that is the, uh, uh, say, the equation in xy. And uh, look at this. If you solve for y, you will get two answers. So y is not really a function of x, but uh, locally you can say that. If you just go so, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just look at this. Globally, this is not, uh, remember from, say, college algebra, this can't be, uh, so this is located at hk, with radius r. Uh, this is not the graph of a function. Why? Because it uh, does not satisfy uh, the vertical line test, right? What does vertical, vertical line test mean here? It means that a vertical line intersects, if it intersects the graph, uh, most often it intersects at uh, two points. So I'm not talking about this, these two extreme points. Uh, so, so this cannot be graph of a uh, function. But if I restrict myself to just one point here, and some small the interval, some small interval, then this is in fact this small portion can be graph of a function. Now, for this point here, I can do that, but can I do it for this point here, right, right here? Can I find any interval around this point that gives me, say, a graph of a function? Just, just look if I uh, magnify this. This is like this, right? This can't be graph of a function. It, doesn't satisfy the vertical line test. This thing. Magnify. Uh, but uh, if if you take other points, not these two extreme points, then yes, that can be uh, looked at in this way. So that's what, as I said, it's related to what we call implicit motion theorem. So let's not go that far into this business. Uh, but anyway, globally, this is not uh, this doesn't give you equation of function. If you 
solve for y, you will get two answers. And so y as a function of x doesn't exist because y gives you two, in fact, answers. I mean, x gives you two answers for y, uh, plus and minus. There's a plus minus here. Uh, so, but anyway, now this, uh, you can just guess what uh, the, the parametric equation should look like when we uh, draw a picture and you see why this happens. Uh, so this circle is a uh, hearsay and the radius r. So this is the radius. This is h. This is k. And uh, I need the x and y coordinates of this point. I can uh, look at this this way and say, okay, I know this is like uh, my time t, and uh, this is uh, r cosine t, and this one is r sine t, but I'm looking for this thing from here to here. So this is what? This is h plus r cosine t, and the other one is k plus r sine t, okay? So, the, and that's this thing. So, x will be uh, h plus r cosine t, and y is k plus r sine t. Okay, so this is the simplest, uh, which means that you are assuming that the uh, rotational motion is simply theta equals t with angular uh, speed of uh, 1 and no angular acceleration. So, uh, as I said, since we are not dealing with uh, just the path, that is how you define the path. Uh, the, the, these are equations for that path, and uh, well, as I said, you can just write 2t, 5t a second or something. So that uh, is in fact a circle. Uh, uh, these are parametric equations for a circle. A uh, special case is when the circle is located at, say, uh, well, uh, located, uh, I mean, the center is at 0, 0. If the center is at 0, 0, then this is 0, 0. So, uh, when hk is, uh, where should I write? I can go up here. Uh, if the center is at 0, 0, or hk being 0, 0, we have the famous equations that I started with. x is r cosine t and the y is r Okay, so that is uh, the, these two completely identify and uh, give you a circle. In fact, I should have written the t is, uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi. This one also goes from 0 to 2 pi. If I have 2t, remember, you just need one revolution. So uh, since you need one revolution, uh, you go from 0 to 2 pi. If you don't need one revolution, you need half revolution, then you go from 0 to pi. So let me uh, give you an example of what I mean by this thing. So let me, uh, so 2 will be this thing. Uh, so 2, if I have x is say 5 cosine t and the y is 5 sine t and let's say t goes from 0 to 5 or 6 or 5 or 3 let's say, not 5 or 6, 5 or 3 so if t goes from 0 to 5 or 3 then uh, the uh, it looks like this so the, remember the t is the the angle here so it starts here somewhere, and this is 5, and the circle ends here. And this is again 5, 
and this is pi over 6, or no, pi over 3. So, particle starts here, t equal to 0, and this is t equals pi over 3. Uh, depending on the, uh, I mean the units used for time, you can say the seconds or hours or whatever, but that's not important here. So at time zero to time pi over three, this object has moved from here to here. Okay, so this is the uh, motion is uh, counterclockwise. Is counterclockwise and uh, so uh, this domain of time, so this is domain of t. And now uh, in this situation I can write this domain for t. So this domain for t in fact uh, decides on what it looks like and how far it goes. So if for this one t goes from 0 to 2 pi, then uh, that's one run. Okay, now let's look at the uh, Another example, and let me change this thing. So let's say we have, uh, uh, instead of t, let's write 3t, okay? Okay, where do you think uh, it this particle will be after, uh, so this is point O, this is uh, 5 here, and that's time 0. Time equals pi over 3. Where is it that time equals pi over 3? You can calculate this for t equals pi over 3. Uh, well, let's say uh, this. So for t equals pi over 3, we have. If t is pi over 3, then x is uh, 5 cosine pi and y is 5 sine pi and this is a 5 and this is 0, negative 5 in fact, negative 5 and this one is 0. So where am I? At time equal 0, I'm here, then I move like this and I'm here. see the other one I was somewhere here so this motion is somehow faster and you can say that uh, physically that it has uh, omega for this one is 3 say radian per second or whatever and the other one was just 1 radian per second <sighs> so that is a, a, a third example of uh, a motion and you see these two uh, in fact, these two, they give me a circle, but the domains are different, the domains uh, are different. So, uh, this can give me a circle, this can give me a circle if I go another round, uh, say half a round, then this is in fact 2 pi over 3, right? So, this one will give me a circle when t is between 0 and 2 pi over 3, uh, the other one gives me a circle uh, when t is between 0 and 2 pi, okay? So, uh, different domains and they give, they, they give me the same curve. But the motion is different. The motion is different. Uh, the, but, but the paths are the same. So, that was uh, for, uh, say, no, I mean that, uh, well, let's say an ellipse. So what does it look like? Ellipse is centered at HK with parameters A and B. So what does it mean A and B? So if I have an ellipse, say, well, um, it's not easy to Draw an ellipse and just another circle. So if it is located at this point, then this uh, is uh, say a minus a. This is b minus b. Okay. 
give it the center here. And this has the equation, remember, x squared over a squared uh, plus y squared over b squared is 1. So that was an ellipse. Now, when a and b are the same, when a and b are the same, we will get a circle. Remember, a and b the same, we will get a circle, and that's r, r, uh, r minus r, minus r, r. So that was a circle, when a and b are the same. And you will get x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So, now if I move this to uh, this point O, if I move it somewhere, say here, so it was here at point O, now it is at point HK. So what happens? Uh, each one of them is added. So this will add it, uh, this one, an H is added to this, and this one, a K is added. Okay. And the equation for this one, uh, center at 0, 0. Now for center at hk, this will be simply x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is 1. Okay, so uh, what do you think are? The, the parametric equations are it's very similar to a circle uh, except uh, we have a and b rather than r a and b rather than r so uh, I can write the equation uh, where should I uh, yeah, okay. I just erase this, this thing and write it down so x will be uh, say h plus a cosine t and y will be k plus b a uh, b sine t and t goes from 0 to 5. So that gives me an ellipse. Okay and well I'm not going to discuss uh, you can guess that if t uh, if the if omega is different, which means if I write 3t, 5t, 10t, then it is a much faster motion. 10t is, is a <laughs> going around so fast. And 1 means just then if that's 10t in say one hour, say uh, that 10t goes 10 times, uh, it has 10 times more distance, say something like that. So, uh, anyway, now uh, let's look at another thing. Uh, what is that? Five? Uh, well, let me start here. Hyperbolas. Now, hyperbolas are, uh, we had two situations. One situation was like this, the, the hyperbola opened, say, up and down, remember? So that was like this, and like this. And if I remember correctly, the, the way that it is in some... Uh, this thing, uh, if uh, we use A for X and Y for B, then this should be B, a negative B, and this should be X squared. Uh, in fact, uh, y squared over b squared minus uh, x squared over a squared is 1. And what function has this property? Uh, I guess I gave you something in your exam. That's the hyperbolic function. Now, you uh, let me write it and then you will see why these two functions are, well, one reason that these two functions are called sine and cosine hyperbolic. So if I let, uh, remember, sine and cosine hyperbolic, they have this property, that cosine hyperbolic squared t minus sine hyperbolic squared t is 1. It's not plus, it's minus. So I can use it here. I can use this here. So if I set y to be b cosine hyperbolic t and x uh, to be, well, let's write x first. Right. Uh, and x first, then y. So x 
x should be this one, so it should be a sine hyperbolic t and the y is b cosine hyperbolic t. And this gives me this. Okay, so as I said, that's one reason these two functions are called hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. Remember, for a circle, we had sine and cosine, right? For uh, this, we have uh, sine hyperbolic and cosine hyperbolic. Now, you can uh, just guess what the other way is. If I have uh, a hyperbola which uh, opens left and right, say, if it's on the left and right, not open, that doesn't make sense. So if it uh, is here and here, say, and this point is minus a, say, let's use a for x-axis, so this will be x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is 1. Now in this situation I need x to be a, a sine, a cosine hyperbolic, right? But I need that to be this thing, cosine hyperbolic t, and the y is uh, b sine hyperbolic t. Okay, so. Now, that t uh, can go from minus infinity to infinity, so th there's no restriction on that t. Uh, and uh, if you graph it like this, you will see that you will get one side of this, not both sides. You will get one side, and then you have to put like minus sign, and you get the other side. But anyway, that is uh, one way to uh, de define, say, hyperbolic functions. And you can guess, if I move this point to hk, then this is plus h, this is plus k, okay? Moving it somewhere, if this origin moves to some point here, simply add coordinates of that point to x and y, that's all. So if you have uh, paralytic equations when some kind of center is at 0, 0, or not the, the same as some kind of center, if, the, if you have something here and then you translate this to uh, with uh, using some vector, say h k, then the h is added to this and k added to the y. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I guess I guess that's enough for us. Uh, what else? Uh, well, I I just refer you to your textbook, and you can take a look at some pictures, uh, beautiful pictures. If you simply, if you write. Uh, just, just uh, check this on uh, maybe your, your calculator or more from more, 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 more maybe. If you write x is a cosine t and then you write y is uh, say uh, sine 2t for example. See what happens, that's not uh, a circle, that's something else. So what is it? I don't think there's a name for that, maybe there is. Uh, but uh, that is in fact something, some parametric and uh, as I said, I can give you uh, like a sub lecture using just Mathematica or uh, say Matna, for example, to graph uh, some of these and you will see uh, what they look like. And uh, let me see if I can do that. Uh, but anyway, so that was uh, the first part of this uh, section, and that is just curves and how to write down curves as. Uh, parametric equations, or what is the relationship between the parametric equation and the uh, curve. Okay, so that is the first lecture in this uh, chapter, and see you next time.